Hello, gonna do a video today on the worst experiences of meeting wrestlers and I've done some of my autograph collection and have had people comment and like it and so I thought I'll continue kind of but maybe go a little different direction today and I've seen other people's videos on meeting wrestlers and that have not been good experiences and I just wanted to share that today and thanks for those people who have been following me on Twitter at Wrestling UNAB, or you can, our, we have a Facebook page, and also always just leave comments below. Please subscribe to this channel and for more wrestling videos. This, these are the kind of videos that I originally thought this channel was gonna be completely about, and it's kind of turned into a hodgepodge of wrestling, and some people seem to like it, some people are probably not as much. I mean, but hey, I have 1,200 subscribers. I appreciate all of you guys, and we're gonna continue to go here, and I've really enjoyed watching other people's videos, but this was a hard list to make, 10. And I had a hard time coming up with 10. I think I finally did. The people towards the bottom of the list are a little bit more just, the experience was a little more like quiet and and not as exciting as I was hoping it would be and not really anything that. And then you get up towards the top and, and maybe the experience was a little bit worse. And so I'll be sharing those as I go. And it's funny to see because some of the people on the other list, they'll be like, oh, this is the worst wrestler I've ever met. And I'm like, wow, I met him three times and he was great all three times. And so I'm sure some of you guys on this list will disagree with me or have had, or have had good experience with some of these people. I'd love to hear about it. Comment below and tell me the good experience. And, and, and I'm hoping, because I'm hoping that a couple of these guys too, if I get another chance to meet them, I'll try to. And hopefully that experience will go better. Because I know all wrestlers have bad days and... I, you don't des if, especially if you're not paying for it, you don't deserve anything from a wrestler. So if they give you an autograph or a picture, that's a that's a bonus. Some of these guys I did pay for though too at a convention like WrestleCon or Comic Con or whatever other convention you can think of. And yeah, at that time I would expect them to be a little bit nicer if you're giving them money for their autograph or their picture. So at the bottom of the list, number ten is Leilani Kai. Some of you younger or newer wrestling fans might not even remember. Leilani Kai or have any idea who she is. She was a woman's wrestler predominantly in the 1980s WWF and she was in a tag team called the Glamour Girls. Jimmy Hart managed them. They were actually the WWF women's tag team champions for a good deal of the 80s like um, at least a year I think and that was about 85, 86 and I think they beat like Velvet McIntyre and Princess Victoria possibly and then they eventually lost to the Jumping Bomb Angels. They were in Survivor Series 87. She was also in, I'm going to say WrestleMania 11. It could be 12. Someone will have to check that for me. Against Alondra Blaze. And that was when they were pushing Alondra Blaze as a new women's champion. And she needed a WrestleMania match. Leilani Kai did well. But Alondra Blaze kind of won in a pretty squash match. So number 10 on the list. Why did she end up there? Well, I finally got to meet her. At WrestleCon, I believe it was WrestleCon 33, and that would have been in Orlando. Um, some of the WrestleCons all bunched together, so, so I might be off a year on some of these. And I met Judy Martin and Wendy Richter. Judy Martin was her tag team partner in the Glamour Curls. Wendy Richter was women's wrestler at WWF around that time as well. And they were both so nice. And when I met them, Judy Martin was sharing stories. Wendy Richter was sharing stories. They took good posed photos together. They took a, they took a photos with each of them individually. They took a post photo together. They took a post photo together where they're choking me. They took a post photo together where they're choking each other. They photobombed each other after we already had some good photos. So it was just, it was so much fun. And we had a good time for about 20 minutes. And I'm just like, this is gonna be so cool. I finally get to meet the other glamour girl, Leilani Kai. I'm gonna ask her about the glamour girl. I'm gonna tell her I met Judy Martin and, and stuff like that. I think it was like 15 bucks for a picture. She didn't have a line at all. She didn't seem to be getting a lot of traffic because, and probably not. I mean, people who go to WrestleCon probably don't remember. I mean, a lot of the 80s wrestlers that, especially the non, not quite as famous ones. I mean, like I remember, like Corporal Kirshner didn't have as much of a line as I thought he should have because I loved Corporal Kirshner, but no, he didn't. So she didn't have a line. And then, so I'm like, this is gonna be so cool. I bet she'll have some time to talk and everything. To take the picture, took a really nice picture, it seemed nice, but very quiet, and so I just started asking, I told her I met Judy Martin, started asking her questions, and she didn't really talk at all, and would give like one word answers, and kind of just got the impression she didn't really want to talk that much, or tell stories, or anything, I couldn't get any stories out of her, and so it was just kind of a disappointment. Like I said, it, she was, it was just a, Disappointing that it was so quiet and, and easy, and she didn't do anything, she wasn't mean, she didn't do anything wrong, but disappointing nonetheless. It was at WrestleCon, I thought she could have 
really impressed me by telling me a glamour girl story and and then i just had met all the glamour girls and so for her taking partner to be so much more outgoing than her was just kind of disappointing but like so she ends up at number 10 on the list and um probably when i probably wouldn't pay to meet because i got a night like i said got a nice picture with her so probably won't pay to meet her again and just so i don't know if that will ever change then maybe maybe if the glamour girls are together i could pay and maybe judy martin will bring a little bit more of her outgoingness out of her or something like that. So like I said, it's hard to come up with some of these and so she's number 10. Number nine, Greg the Hammer Valentine. He's been on a couple other lists that I saw from other YouTubers and he was a hard one because I'm actually his protege who was in the wrestler, Andrew Anderson, the reinforcer, was has been very nice. I've gotten to know him a little bit. He did an interview with me and everything and I appreciated him and and Andrew Anderson just looks up to Greg Valentine so much. And so Greg's a hard one because I met him like four times and never mean to me, but just never outgoing or anything, just kind of just kind of there. And I think some of the other people that met him have kind of said the same thing. I yeah, nothing bad again, but at the same time for for how much of a hero and like a legend he is to me and just remembering him being the intercontinental champion when i first started watching the wwf and those feuds with tito santana and the figure four leg lock and then becoming tag team champions with beefcake and then even rhythm and blues and everything i mean it's just i grew up with valentine and oh it was so cool to have more outgoing stories and stuff like that but rather he's quiet and i mean i i think i mean wrestling's taking a toll on him i mean I'll think of how many matches he's wrestled and he was very physical he wrestled long matches I mean, the bumps and bruises over the years have taken the toll, and so it just hasn't been the best experience ever. So he makes number nine on the list. Number eight, Michael Cole. Yeah, the announcer, Michael Cole. And, oh, met him in about 2007, I'm going to guess it was. And other wrestlers, we were just at an arena. He comes by, and he really just doesn't seem to want to interact with the fans and this I mean this was 11 years ago so it was, it was a little different spot in the company then he was still one of the main announcers and I know the announcers sometimes have like meetings and stuff to go to and they have to plan ahead and, and do other stuff so he might have had some stuff to do but just I mean you're Michael Cole you're announcing you could be a uh, ambassador for WWE and come out and just shake a few hands meet the fans for five minutes and and you're making quite an impression and Instead, it doesn't seem like you really care that much. And he, he's passed in a couple times else and just doesn't really acknowledge the fans that much. And I guess if that's if he's going to be like the businessman, that's fine. But at the same time, then he can make a list like this. And because, yeah, just I would like to... I met him the one time, got a really quick autograph. I didn't even get a picture with him, unfortunately. And that's probably all I'm ever going to get from him unless... He, unless I just get lucky one time, and yeah, I'm, I'm hoping I do get to, he, I like him, I like him as an announcer, and I always have, I actually liked his Wrestlemania match with the King, or his little feud with the King better than a lot of people did, because I just thought it was funny, and I'm not as sour on that as some people are, so who knows. Number seven, the Honky Tonk Man. Here's a guy who's been on other people's lists, too. And here's a guy that I I actually see him on Facebook a lot because he's really good friends with a couple of my promoter friends and stuff like that. And he seems like a pretty nice guy, but just when he when you meet him at a signing or something, he's just kind of in character and and it's not really that outgoing or anything. And because I even met him and I was like, hey, the greatest Intercontinental Champion of all time, and he didn't really. It's more like, are you gonna buy something? And I'm like, oh, come on, just give me a little bit here and. I just, yeah, it was disappointing, and I loved his character, and he grew up, or he was, I mean, I grew up right in the midst of his heyday, and I don't think he's the greatest Intercontinental Champion of all time, but I thought he was good, and I thought he was a great heel, and, and maybe that's it, maybe he's just always kind of still a heel at these signings, and doesn't really want to talk, I mean, he, I've taken pictures with him and stuff like that, and that's been fine, and it, it, sometimes with Jake the Snake, he opens up a little bit more, too, I think they're kind of friends, and, and so... Um, I think Jake gets him to open up a little bit more to the fans, but yeah, still disappointing. Hoping that someday he gets off this list because I have a really good meeting with him. I would actually pay to meet him again, but uh, but if I pay to meet him again, I want a little bit more talkies because I don't need another picture or autograph from him. I just need some quality interaction with him. So number six. <sighs> number six was a surprise, and I didn't... 
First, I didn't know if he was going to make the list, and I didn't know where he should go on the list, but... And maybe he's a little high on the list just because of that I thought he would be a lot more outgoing and fan-friendly, but that's Mick Foley. And that, I've heard he's a kind of a mixed bag, which would not surprise me because I've even kind of had the mixed bag experience with him because one time at an arena, actually it was an independent wrestling signing where you paid, he actually was a lot more outgoing and nice and he signed a Mr. Sacco and he took a really nice picture with me and he talked to me for a little while. But twice other times I've met him and it hasn't gone as well. I met him very early in my wrestling chasing days and it was at a book signing. It was he wrote Titanium Brown, which was like a kid's book. He was wrote a couple no, actually it wasn't Titanium Brown, it was Scooter. Like it was the kid's book Scooter. And he did like a book reading and a book signing at like a Barnes and Noble or it might have been board. I think it actually was Borders at the time, which when they still existed. And so, and that was fun to go to the book reading, and then and then he was going to sign and take pictures. And he said, "Oh, I can, I can look up really fast for pictures." So yeah, but we have to keep the line moving. But when he got up to meet him in line, it was like he wouldn't look up. He wouldn't. He just signed the book quickly and move on, and signed the book quickly and move on. And that was kind of disappointing. And another time, I met him kind of at a Hall of Fame reception type thing. And I wanted to get a picture with him and Terry Funk together, and they were both there. And Terry was very open to it, and he really wasn't. And that was kind of disappointing as well. So I know that he's probably, out of all the wrestlers on the list, probably the one that aches the most. And so I know he's probably got good days and bad days, which I've kind of run into. But like, there's, I have a video of him, though, from a WrestleCon hotel where he's telling stories in the lobby. And I'm, and I'm taping it, and he's, he's telling this other kid stories about how to become a wrestler and stuff like that. So... He seems to have a nice side to him, and and so I'm hoping for more. And, he, and if he, when he goes like these Hall of Fame things, he really appreciates the business and stuff like that. So I just, there's been times where, yeah, sometimes it seems like when it's like a lot of fans meeting him, he just doesn't seem as into that. And I don't know if that's maybe because his body's hurting and he gets tired, or yeah, maybe or maybe just not a natural people person, and you never know. But for someone who understands the visit who was such a fan that he skipped school so he could go see Morocco and Snuka. I was just hoping for someone a little bit more fan friendly and he just isn't there. So that was number six. Number five, a legend. And once again, gonna the injury bug I think is one of the main reasons that he's on this list, but that's Arn Anderson. And all right, I mean, I, I respect him and appreciate how much he's done for the business. He's never been one of my favorite wrestlers. I was never even that big of a Four Horsemen fan. I was a WWF fan in the 80s and more than a NWA fan. So um, that's right. But he's still an agent. I mean, he had to retire in like 1998, 1999 because of his neck and how much trouble that was giving him. And so it's 20 years later. So I'm sure he's in pain, and, and you, come, you get him off a flight or something, and yeah, I'm sure he's not. The last thing he wants to do is deal with more fans, but man, he just doesn't seem to like the fans at all, and yeah, it's been, I've, he's kind of, he gets kind of mad at fans too when you ask him for an autograph at times, so it hasn't been the, the most pleasant thing I've ever seen. I did get to meet him one time in a controlled setting, actually, and this is the only time I've officially met him, and you could pay to... I meet him and Ole Anderson. I really wanted a picture with him and Ole Anderson together, the great tag team, and, and he was pleasant during that experience, so he does get, have that one little good thing, but overall, he's you're not going to get much out of him meeting him, I don't think, and other people, I think, would agree with that, too. So, number four on the list is kind of one of those other ones that I think probably wasn't as bad as I remembered, but it was just, you just assumed it was going to be so good that it was so disappointing the way it happened, and that's Eugene. Nick Eugene Dins Dinsmore or something like that. And this is hard because he actually runs an independent promotion, very close, the closest independent promotion to me right now. I haven't actually been down there, but I plan on going down there sometime, and I hope to meet him again. But at the same time, I'm just, I think if you meet him at the promotion, you're going to be spending money. And as much as I liked him, I really, I got the autograph and the picture from him so I really don't need it again so I'm hoping that sometimes it's like a package deal or something like you can get a VIP or something because I really would love to just meet him for a better experience because I think maybe I'll get a better experience but here we are we were at an independent show this is not one that he was running but someone else was running 
and he was a guest and you paid and I actually bought a combo a picture and an autograph together and I was just so excited to I thought he was gonna be like all funny and like wave and or yeah like and he was pretty much just he wanted to make sure he got paid first and then would just all not even all business like really didn't really seem to want to like, share stories or anything and so maybe a little higher on the list because of how disappointed I was in, in meeting him and because I thought it was gonna be someone I mean sometimes you just meet someone and you're like hey, yeah they're not gonna be that nice you could already tell this guy I thought was gonna be so nice I mean WrestleMania 21 uh, I was there and I mean honestly I remember more as Hulk Hogan's moment at WrestleMania 21 which was so cool but he comes out to the ring and Muhammad Hussan and Davari come out and attack him and and then Hogan makes the save and he gets to meet his hero Hogan but then it turned into more into a Hogan moment but yeah so yeah I just thought it was going to be great and it was yeah not so great and yeah a little disappointed so once again like I said I'm hoping to meet him again I will give him another chance I'll give everyone on this list another chance and if it ever comes back I'll at least comment below that hey I had a good meeting and maybe someday I'll make another list or something too and they'll be off the list but for now, I have to call him like I see him, and it was disappointing. Number three on the list is Bully Ray. And, oh, this one, I actually, I listen to Busted Open Radio. I love him as an announcer on Busted Open Radio. Every once in a while, it seems like he puts himself over a little bit too much. But overall, I will give Busted Open credit for being a very entertaining radio show. And I'll give Bully Ray as being knowledgeable and being very good on the show. And I love the tag team. I, I wouldn't call him the greatest tag team wrestler of all time, but I would certainly call him a great wrestler. Definitely Hall of Fame worthy for like WWE Hall of Fame or any other Hall of Fame too, but WWE is kind of the famous one right now. And I certainly would put him in my Hall of Fame with, D I mean, I'll put the Dudley boys together with Devon, a great, great tag team. And so no problems there. And I know most of the time he's a heel, so and he, I think he kind of stays in character. But when you're meeting him and stuff, Devon is so much more fan friendly and Bully just kind of doesn't seem to like the fans. And we were at an after party at a TNA show once and he really didn't want the fans there at all. Even though they invited us to the after party, they said, hey, come out to the after party at so-and-so bar or so-and-so restaurant or whatever. So the fans all come out there and Bully seems like, why are all these fans here? Yeah, well, JB invited us, <laughs> Bully. And so, yeah, like I said, Great per I would love to meet him again. I've actually met him a few different times because TNA was pretty easy to meet those wrestlers. And so, I, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I won't plan on meeting him again. Maybe I'll get a chance to meet him with something busted open. I know busted opens at WrestleMania a lot. And I'd love to tell him how much I like him on busted open. Maybe we'll have a positive conversation on that or something and, and get him off this list. And I'd really, yeah, I, I want everyone off this list. I mean, this is just, these aren't personal. This is just bad experiences I've had. And I would love to get them off the list. And so number two it was hard to decide who was number two and who was number one, but I'm going to go with Austin Aries as number two. And this, actually, with what just happened with um, Impact Wrestling, this doesn't surprise me as much now, but, yeah, I've met him a few... He's actually... I think he's from Milwaukee, which is... And I'm in the Midwest, so I've met him a few times. I met him back when he was Austin Starr, even in TNA. And he just really... He's really big on fans selling his in, his autograph online, so I guess that's part of it. And, and I actually, and I do not, I do not, I've never sold an, I've never sold a autograph I've attained in person online. Like if I've gotten an autograph card, I, I can, I, I don't have a problem selling that. Or sometimes I bought, I bought a couple of wrestling collections, and they have autographs in them from other people. And since they mean nothing to me, I put those online and sell them. But I have never asked a wrestler for an autograph and put it online. Every time a wrestler is giving me an autograph, it goes in my collection because it means something to me. I like pictures more than autographs, but I still, especially if you can get the autograph thrown in for free or cheap, or if it's one of my favorites, I definitely still want the autograph. Actually, and I collected autographs a lot more more years ago and now it's more just trying to get the pictures and the autographs so yeah so I've never sold them online I understand a couple other wrestlers are like that too they really don't want to see their autographs online so that's why they don't want to sign as much and so that's fine but oh Austin Aries it's like you're a yeah he's actually been better now but 10 years ago he really wasn't he was an independent wrestler he was a great one and it was like yeah but just oh I just couldn't imagine, and I actually, my one of my best videos online, I have the press conference with 
him and Del Rio, and at least he was the one that showed up at that one, and then El Patron, or Del Rio, as I still call him, didn't show up, but then, then the last one, Johnny Impact beats him, John Morrison, and he flips off somebody from Impact Wrestling Management and walks, no, sells the finish, and yeah, and now he's gone, and who knows where he's going to end up. I'd give him another chance, but I think that's kind of, I think it's just going to kind of be him. I mean, cause even at the press conference, he was kind of like that. I think that's his personality, possibly just his character, and so he makes number two on the list. Now we finally get to number one. I know this is going to be a surprise, especially for which one of the brothers it is. It's a Steiner brother, but it's Rick Steiner. And I know that Scott Steiner has had some rumors of not being the most fan-friendly or even kind of hot-tempered or something, but nothing could be further from the truth in my meetings with Scott Steiner, and yet Rick Steiner was such a disappointment. So I met them both, and usually, so a couple times I've met them on separate occasions, and but, uh, but sometimes they've been together too. And one time I met them at a Hall of Fame weekend, and Scott was just, he was there with his family, and we, we, we were down with him at the hotel pool, and Scott wasn't swimming or anything. It was just, I think the, kid, the kids were swimming. And then we're sitting there talking to him in the in his lounge chair or whatever. I mean, we didn't ask for pictures or autographs. But we just talked to him for like 20 minutes. Very fun guy. And just sits there and talks to you and tells stories. And you can ask him questions and stuff. Didn't, I mean, didn't seem to mind at all. And, just, and, we're, and here he is at, on a vacation with his family and still just talking to us a little bit. I mean, we were very polite and... Um, yeah, I think there's only one. Other, there's only one other guy there, and me. So I mean, yeah, and we just we were very polite and very respectful, and yeah, and yeah, definitely, and like I said, we didn't ask for an autograph, didn't ask for a picture, and it's, and when their family, when their kids came up and stuff, just left him alone then and stuff like that too, so so he could be with his family. And, and then so we saw him later in the hotel, and he's like, hey, we asked him, can we get a picture and stuff? Yeah, do you guys want me to sign anything? Yeah, so friendly. Rick, on the other hand. Was one of those that you just thought was going to be the same, and nope. I guess I guess he's into real estate, and maybe I don't know what else he does now. But yep, all he wants is is the money, and he's not going to do anything with you unless you pay him. And so, yeah, it's just kind of odd that that Scott seems to be the more fan friendly one in this situation, and Rick wasn't. And so, I met them together at a wrestle reunion show too. And kind of had the same impression. That was a little hard because it was really fast. But once again, it was kind of... Scott seemed like he was a little nicer. So I understand that maybe people haven't had the same experience I have had with Scott. But I think if you respect him, you can get more out of him. And unfortunately, Rick makes number one on my list. Hoping that sometimes changes too. I, I was okay on the Steiners. I'm, I'm not... They weren't my favorite tag team. But at the same time, I appreciated them. And so that was fine. And there. You know. So... That's the list, 10 through 1. That's some meeting wrestlers that haven't been the best. I'm hoping that they can all come off the list as they have nothing personal against any of them, and hopefully we have some good experiences in the future. And like everyone else, I probably should make a top 10 best meets, and that's going to be so hard because I can think of about 40 or 50. I'm thinking about maybe doing a couple extra things like maybe top 10 wrestlers who have been so nice that but I didn't expect it like like that would possibly be Scott Steiner then or something like that too and and otherwise just continuing to share this you can hear some of the stories as I go through my autograph collection but yeah this was the top 10 wrestlers that my experience just wasn't great with and I enjoy I'm still gonna look for I'm sure there's a few I haven't found yet and I encourage you to look at other people